So welcome back to Progressive Soup. It's uh, noon 30 on Thursday. We're back. And since last night's show, the audience, well, we, we're still here. The audience is still here. I don't know where they slept. I don't know where we slept, but we're here. <laughs> so the audience is still calling for us to talk about Charlottesville, Virginia. And we start talking amongst ourselves about the subtleties of language and the way we look at ourselves and I'm not sure what exactly caught my, my ear, but the statues, all the statues. So, you know, these, these uh, few skinheads and uh, neo-Nazis and KKK members organized in order to protect one statue of Robert E. Lee in Charlottesville, which, by the way, was on the green. Thank you. And was, his horse's name was Traveler, so that's how he got a, away from that. But... <laughs> Their, their objective was to save one statue, and, and suddenly, because of what happened, statues are being taken down all over the country. Statues that were dedicated to, uh, to soldiers, uh, political people from the Confederacy, from the, uh, the Confederate States. So, what happened? <laughs> what the heck? Joe, what happened? Why? What, why? Uh, <laughs> well, as we were speaking um, overnight last night, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's just it's, America is that confusing place, you know. Um, uh, you know, a, a good point brought up by Ron about yes, you know, although George Washington was a slave owner, it was legal, so he wasn't breaking any laws. Whereas, mm -hmm. whereas Robert E. Lee was he, he was a traitor, so there's never a time when a traitor is looked at as right. oh, well, you're a traitor. That's a good thing. Well, probably probably are good times. You know, it, depending on who's in power and what's happening, you know, a coup could be seen as a good thing. Um, so, that, you know, that's interesting. It's just the way words and history is, is written, really. Who, who are the traitors? And, uh, you know, are they, you know, the, our forefathers, they were traitors as, as compared to England, you know. So should there be a statue of George Washington in England? You know, because he, you know, he would be There you go. Yeah. That I doubt. There so, probably isn't, though. Yeah, right. there probably isn't. But yeah, probably not. But again, you know, it's the borders we cross. And we spoke about the, the American Indian problem, the American Native American. Uh, you know, when you're out there reading these signs about how these people disappeared. And, 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 then, they, and then there was this one <laughs> place that we were, you know, in the. Um, disappeared. Not far from Wounded Knee. Yeah. That, you know, some of the, some of the signage was quite powerful because, you know, the, American, the Native Americans were fighting such a good fight, and they, would, they knew the land. And, but again, the, the, the then growing American troops had endless amount of soldiers. So they could take a hit in the battle and lose so many. And the, the, the Native Americans would say, yes, OK, wow, we won. And then have a breather, but then come out. They would come out a until finally. A lot more soldiers and a lot more powerful weaponry. Right. Overall. Right. And so, and so, and that we have what we have, but those statues and the, that commemorate out in that, in that country out west, which is still kind of raw. I mean, it's not thousands of years ago. It's, it's within my great grandmother's lifetime, you know. And, and, so it's uh, not, too, imagine, not, not too deep in history. You can imagine what a Native, a Native American person would actually feel Seeing a, a statue sure. of Davy Crockett, as you yes, said. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, they they not, still yeah, don't accept, they don't accept $20, they, they don't like accepting $20 bills, because Andrew Jackson's on it. Yes. And yeah. he was very, you know, not He was the Indian, guys. he was the he Indian was, killer. He was he, the one that he, did, he, did, he did a lot of, the, the whole trail of tears, and he, a lot of, a lot of slaughtering. Right. And so, the, you know, of course, if you gave it 20 but it, it's kind of like, you know, it's like one of those things, mm. if you can, 
interesting don't spend 20s. Interesting know? cultural tip there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bring 10s and 50s. <laughs> but m most of these uh, monuments were not erected until long after the Civil War. That's true. They so were during Jim Crow is when most of them were put up. Jim Crow and then early 1900s. And the civil again, there was a surgence of them and the civil rights uh, movement. And so it, it's not about the statues. It's not about, you know, uh, those particular political figures. But, um, you know, uh, I, you know, think that they belong in a museum, you know, yeah. uh, rather than in a place for public veneration. That's what, the, the veneration, that's a good point. That's a good word to use because when you have them out in public, that's really what you're doing is you're, 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 honoring, you're, them. you're honoring them, you're venerating them. Um, in a museum, you could put it in a context, uh, well, these folks fought for what they thought was the, a, a correct goal to, uh, to separate from the United States because, because, uh, because they wanted slavery. And you mentioned Davy Crockett. Now, I've been to the Alamo. Mm -hmm. I was in France in the 1960s with my mom. My mom was a teacher, took my teacher's tour. I sat in a movie theater in Paris and saw a little movie called The Alamo with John Wayne. Oh, the original, okay. John yeah. Wayne playing Davy Crockett. And what I had always learned in America was that these guys were heroes. Mm -hmm. These guys were fighting against the big, bad Mexicans who wanted to control them and wouldn't let them separate from Mexico and join the United States, as ultimately they did with the state of Texas. In the movie theater, the French were all cheering for the Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> they, weren't cheering, they weren't cheering for the guys that I expected them to cheer for, and I was stunned. <clears throat> so I did a little, as a teenager, I started to think about this and started to do a little reading and a little investigating, and found out that really the truth of the matter is the reason why they separated from Mexico and joined the United States is because Mexico had outlawed slavery 30 years earlier. Right. And they just let these, these Texicans they let them keep slavery out of, out of some ridiculous courtesy because Texas was big with cotton. Cotton was right. big in Texas. And when you're growing cotton, you need to have cheap labor, slaves. Yes. So the reason why they separated from Mexico and joined the southern portion, it's when it became a southern state, is because they wanted to, to hold on to their you slavery. Mm -hmm. Interesting footnote to, to that story. Uh, and so for many years, it was Davy Crockett and basically a handful of American, white American names on the Alamo. Mm -hmm. But the Mexican American community uh, w was uh, appalled by that and said, you, you know, there were many Mexican Americans who fought as well. I mean, again, w you know, where they, where they mm -hmm. lie, because there was other things going on in Mexico as well that mm -hmm. they were fleeing. So there were Mexican Americans yeah. fighting mm -hmm. on the side of the Alamo to, to separate, maybe not for the whole slave cause, but those names have since been added, and supposedly there are, I, I've never, I haven't been, but like hundreds you know, mm -hmm. of, of names that were old, forgotten in history yeah. because they, they died on, in that same battle. Maybe a know? lot of the folks that fought in the Mexican army to try to hold on to their land yeah. and prevent this secession the way that um, Americans from the northern part of the United States fought and went into the south to fight to hold on to the southern states mm. to hold them back from seceding from, from the United States of America. Yeah. Side note, side note, um, we talked about Robert E. Lee and we talked about George Washington. They're related. Uh, George Washington, his wife Martha, is a Custis. Custis, yeah. And Custis is uh, one, uh, an extension of the Lee family. Okay. So there's, there's, a, there's a connectivity there. And good point about the, um, about the fact that, you know, yeah, Washington had slaves, but at that point, slavery was, uh, was, it was the law of the land. You were allowed to have slaves anywhere in the United States. Now, and I lost track of where I was going with this, so continue, and I, I'll come back to it. Well, What's, um, so what, what did you, in this travel across America with your dad and with your family, tell us another story. This time it's just on you to tell us a story about a conversation you had. So you had a good one last night. Uh, Who did you meet and how was it interesting? Um, I could tell you a good one about some American Indians, but I'm not him. Um, <laughs> well, you could tell American, a second sorry. Hand. No, I can't. That, that's cheating. Okay, good. Um, yeah. 
tough one though. Uh, dad, help out if you need if you need help. And look to dad. J- dad just give me an out. idea, and then I'll take uh, an idea of oh some interesting people. Oh, uh, Oh, we met so many interesting people. Uh, how about the guy in Idaho that we that we bought the eggs from? Okay, yeah, uh, you spent more time speaking to him, but my understanding was that he was living in California. He was ex-military, and California was getting expensive, and so he moved up to Idaho and got animals and started selling eggs as a side thing. Raising beef. And, and just, just falling off the grid, because in that part of Idaho, that's there where a lot of people, a lot of folks off the grid in Idaho, as and I understand. Also, yeah, it also happens to be a big white supremacist near yeah. Nazi area. And this is why I mean, we were speaking off grid about the underlying racism. You know, my friend, my very big, you know, uh, black friend in, yeah. in New York said, "Do you think the guy would have invited you know me and my family to sleep on his?" Oh, the, the, the fellow in Idaho that that allowed you to yeah to stay to yeah. stay there, and it's like interesting. And it, of course, we didn't talk so deeply. It was like a, a nice meeting. Oh, yeah. we bought some eggs, and, the, and we did want to camping on his front lawn the next morning, had a lovely talk. And he was a nice guy, ex-military. But I didn't go into, you know, does he, did he have the cachet of guns? You know, what was he, you know, because a lot of people, you know, there is a big gun culture in the middle of America. And again, coming from Europe. Um, That's strange. My, yeah, it's strange for my kids. I grew up with it, but it's definitely stranger for my, my kids and my wife, be, her being British. And, um, and so we met some of the nicest people and they, in Arkansas, you know, the hunters, and but guns. It, it's gun, gun, yeah. gun hunting culture. And I'm not condemning it in any way, but I'm, I'm kind of used to it. And I, um, it was interesting seeing it from the European eye. Actually, my wife. You get enough, along pretty well in Europe without really any guns, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. You can practically only have one if you're a police officer. And even then, it's a bit mm-hmm. tough. Right. Um, actually, funnily enough, you're saying it's strange for us Europeans, but speaking to like my cousins here, they actually seem to find it stranger that people just own guns normally, like up here in proper East Coast, New York metro area. They actually seem to find it stranger than I guess I do after this year, like seeing so many people who just own guns, like kids my age up here seem to find it. Yeah. They find the gun it's culture strange. Stranger than I do. Right. And, and, they, it's, and it's everywhere. I'll, yeah. I'll give you an instance. Uh, after um, Sandy Hook, uh, uh, that Christmas we were with our in-laws and uh, all of the presents got distributed and such and then there were like two, these two long boxes that were left at the end and they brought them out and they're, they were these real weapons that they bought for the for the young boys they're not who were barely teenagers and and i just looked at that and i said i can't believe that having just gone through this thing uh this massacre at sandy hook that uh that they would go ahead and and give their children guns but this is this is part of the, the culture here. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. I had an uncle, we lived in Brittany, France, in the Northwest years ago, good 10, 12 years ago, when Louis was born. Uh, and I had a, an uncle of mine said, so, and, and he, I don't equate him with the gun, you know, he's a New Yorker, born in Harlem, and, you know, but for him, protection was, he said, you know, do you have arms to protect your family? Because we were living on the country yeah. road. And I was like, no. I was like, but no one does. I mean, the hunters have a shotgun, but they have to cock it. I mean, you know, there is, yeah. there are guns in Europe, you know, but you know, but not guns no where handguns, you can kill no automatic. You not know, guns they, where you can kill twenty-six right. people in less no, than three no, minutes. No, no, no. And uh, yeah, there's hunting accidents, of course. Yeah. But you know, to me, that question was so foreign. And on this trip, people asked me, so do you have, did you have a gun in the RV? You know, because I was telling no. about we were sleeping on the street and we were sleeping in parking lots. You know, we 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 slept in Walmart parking lots, American um, Native American Indian casinos. Welcome RVs to stay. I mean, so many clever ways that we we uh, did our trip. And I was trying to show the kids a different America. So we really paid for camping in our year about twenty times, maybe. <laughs> and um, of course, there was BLM land, Bureau of Land Management, where you could yeah. stay, and those in beautiful places and front lawns of people's houses, and in, on the streets in Oakland and some of the bigger cities in California. And and, and you know. my wife Kristen and I, we travel a couple times a year. And we spend a lot of, we spend most of our nights in the back of, well, at the, at the, the last time was in a Dodge Caravan because it's long, the seats go down, mm-hmm. 
she's six foot one, I'm six foot six, and we fit beautifully <laughs> in the back with everything down and all this gear thrown up on the front seat. We found the best places to be behind churches. Yeah, we did a couple of churches as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we did a, wall, oh, a Walmart parking lot. Wouldn't yeah. go in the store, but I have to say their parking lot was a pretty, <laughs> a pretty good place. It to was kind of like almost a posh camping for us. It was like, ooh, Walmart tonight. We can go to Red Box, get a DVD, <laughs> and uh, you know, watch it on the computer and twenty-four hour toilets. <laughs> nice. So it was, um, it was, it was interesting. But yeah, getting back to the, you know, that, that. Um, not to get back to the gun culture, just the, the difference in America as you go, you know, getting mm. back to the whole Robert E. Lee and the mm. statues, you know, and what do you do though? You know, do you put every statue in a the museum then? You know, like what you happens? Could. You know, where does it, you know? No, only, only the ones uh, honoring traitors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but or offending, but what about what about everything out west? I mean, because you know the, the Native Americans are very yeah, much well, part of the American population, and I would say all of those, every general that is, you know, involved. venerated there out in the West it offends a heck of a lot I, of our population. I, they they murdered a lot of. I Indians. don't I don't see that as Native being Americans objectionable either. But yeah. I, I you know um, and the, I mean no, that's a very good that's a reasonable point. Yeah. You know um, that. Uh, actually, uh, in you know a lot of the news commentary that I've listened to, nobody actually has brought that up. But that's a really good point. Because unfortunately, I'm going to use when I call Tom Hartman the next time <laughs> for okay. talk radio. Yeah. I'll I'll bring up that point. Bring up the point because it is unfortunate that the Amer you know the Native American is a very forgotten citizen of our country. Because they murdered most of them off, unfortunately. Yeah, but but yeah. you go through, they're very real. They're a real population and. Some of them, some of them, very, some of those places, very depressing. And the and the casinos have these beautiful pictures of you know the tribal elders and all that. But it's and then the breaking of the ground. And they're very proud of their casinos, but that money trickles down in that weird way where it's there's yeah. a lot of alcoholism. Yeah, still. trickle down economics. And my foot. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't work, right? You have your rich gamers and the people who run the casinos. It's yeah. probably just very much like Vegas. You know, I mean, it, sure. it does families. help. It does help, but but not much really gets people. to the, the majority no. of people. No, yeah. and so it's and, and there can be so much more done. I think to respect, like bring it up to time. I That'd think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. So, point made about about statues of um, Davy Crockett and statues out of Little Bighorn. I'm sure this is a statue of General George oh. Armstrong Custer out there. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And uh, and Major Reno and the rest of the folks that that uh, and I think we we mentioned uh, General uh, President Andrew Jackson yeah uh, and the Trail of Tears and oh. and, and, and the, who who and and of course needless to say General President Andrew Jackson is probably it looks like it sounds like the favorite president of a certain guy in the White House now yeah is that's his favorite president because mm -hmm. I don't know why but maybe because. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't know that he murdered <laughs> because he however, was however many Native Americans that he did. But uh, I know, but I mean that because I mean, he was a murderer. I mean, it's it's a it's he a sticking, It's a it's a it's a very you know strange point in America, isn't it? Because when you go out, oh, we got a cat. Uh oh, persistent. Okay, persistent cat. Okay, um, uh, yeah, it, I know it's that time of the show. We're twenty minutes into the show, and you call up, and uh, he wants to know. He wants to know what about what about all the cats that have been murdered. I mean, he's Basil. Basil stood stood in in uh, in defiance outside. It says many a Chinese restaurant. Tell <laughs> them to call the IFAW. They'll take you know the IFAW International uh, Foundation of the uh, Animal of Welfare. Animal Welfare. Yes. Okay. He says, he says he stood. Stood stood in silent protest outside many a Chinese <laughs> restaurant. No, that's not true. You know, because I just I just ate at uh, I just had lunch today at uh, Union Buffet in Danbury. Quick shout out to them. And nothing nothing tasted like cat. Not the chicken, not the pork, not the beef. Yeah, maybe maybe the egg roll might have had a, it, the egg roll is kind of in in the shape of a a stubby tail like you had. Oh, Basil was a Maine Coon with a Manx tail. Uh -huh. So yeah, maybe they put two of your tails together to make an egg roll or, or a spring roll. I don't know. Well, okay. Well, we, we put our word in for you. That's the end. Uh, I'll see you on Friday night on Basil Budacat presents exclamation point. Okay. So we've got so we've got the um, we've got all these statues out there, and we've got all this all this. I, I, you have to call it veneration because when you have a statue out. It ain't out there by accident. No. It's out there because no. because no. you're bringing 
somebody to the public attention yes. for what they did. And if and if the things that the most likely thing that they're remembered for is murdering groups of people. Yeah. I mean, do they uh, one of us, I've, it might have been Louis brought up the point in the first show about, um, you know, you don't, they talk about, they teach about what happened in Germany in the 1930s and 1940s. Mm -hmm. They teach about it in, about, that, about that in, in Germany, but there's no statues of Hitler out anywhere. No. There's no statue of Joseph Goebbels. There's no statue of Goering out there. It's illegal. Yeah. It's illegal, but I'll tell you, if no you go to Nazi, Nazi, Nazi flags. No Nazi you, flags. You, yeah. can't, you, can't, you can't even make the salute. Yeah. I, I think I think they should tear down a lot of the infrastructure of Nuremberg as well, though. It's creepy. When you go there, and you, could, you could stand on the platform that you know, he got yeah. his architects built yeah. for him to dominate over the parades that walked by. And, and when I was up there, I was like, I had to get off of it. The, the energy, everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, yeah. this is scary that it's still yeah. here because just just get rid of it and build apartment buildings. You know, like you know, yeah, yeah, I'm so not into gentrification so much, but maybe yeah. in some of those places. You know, take a couple of uh, couple of bricks out of it or something and, and put them in a museum and say these bricks are from right, exactly. Nuremberg. Yeah, and then the, then the historical context of that, because the Germans really talk a lot about what happened. Yeah, they talk the about it, and, they, and they're, you know, to, because they don't want because when you forget what happens in history. Yeah, they say you're doomed to repeat it, but you're more likely to repeat it. And one of Europe's <laughs> most enlightened leader is Merkel. Merkel. You know? Yeah, and Angela Merkel, yeah. yeah. Big so. shout out to Angela Merkel. <laughs> but, um, so, let's go back to this, uh, this notion. We were talking about the Stonewall Rebellion. We were talking about uh, what's evolved out of that. We've talked about um, bisexual people within that broad rainbow arc of, um, well, I guess, you know, you've got heterosexual people, you've got homosexual people, you've got all kinds of different flavors of, of ice cream, if you will. But, um, yes. Well, I've, I've heard people say that, well, I've, I've heard people say that, that there really are no 100% homosexual, there are no 100% heterosexual people. Everybody's got somewhere in between. And I don't know, and well, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that, that makes sense to you or, but what are, what are, where do bisexual people fit into this broad framework? And where do you, where do you build your alliances within this, within this framework with different groups? Because obviously you have a lot of folks that are, for the most part, heterosexual, and yet you count them as being friends and supporters. So is it just on an individual basis finding people that, that you can bond with um, in conversation and, uh, <laughs> and get to know? Yes, as I was just talking with my uh, heterosexual friend uh, the other day. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's kind of that's a little that's a little silly there. You know, we live we live in a heterosexual dominant uh, society. Uh, yeah. So, but as far as my own personal outlook is, um, you know, inside uh, in our inner self. Uh, the core of who we really are is neither male nor female. So, um, you know, uh, we are essentially genderless. And so what uh, bisexuality is basically is that you recognize that you uh, can be attracted to people of more than one gender. That's all. It's yeah. a simple Simple definition. So it's, so it's not a big, it's not, it's not yeah. really, it's, you a, have it's, the, a, it's a you small have the, part of who we are. Well, it has the, no, I mean, it's a big part of, of who we are, but it's, it's that we all have this potential mm -hmm. to love anyone regardless of, mm -hmm. of gender. That's the thing that I came to, uh, you know, to recognize in myself. I mean, I lived as a gay activist for, for many, many years. And I, I came out uh, relati as bi relatively late in, in my life, uh, long story. But uh, it's, um, uh, bisexuality is really not, is not that unusual. And as we found out, it's actually much more common than, uh, than anyone seems to recognize. Mm. Well, we're hoping there'll come a day when we don't even need to talk about that. Well, so, the same way, likewise, yeah. the race, racial issues. Racial or, na or nation, you know, yeah, my, my daughter, yeah. you know, Louis' sister, Francesca, you know, many years yeah. ago, 
you know, came and asked me, said, Dad, so the kids at school are asking me, you know, what am I? <laughs> you know, you got, I have an American dad, a British mom. I've lived in neither of those countries. I've been raised in France. I'm obviously not French because we don't do, you know, the typical French customs, you know. And, and you know, you're Italian, you have Italian backgrounds. And at that point, we hadn't even visited Italy, you know. And I said, I said, you have the perfect example of a world. You're just a city. You're just a human being, Jess. You know, you know a lot of times people attach that that nationality to a flag or a political, I said, so you have no political leaning or no flag or no cultural you know, thing that you still adhere to that you, you shape yourself by it. You're just you. And this is where you live. And these are the languages you speak. And these are the friends you have. And, but no, but so no one can really pin a, you know, a tag on her because she's a, an American British girl who's grown up in France. So mm -hmm. we're, kind of a, a, we're kind of a conglomeration of our life experiences and I think for most right. people, most of those life experiences are, are fairly positive. Yeah. And uh, no matter who we are, where we come from, it's, um, it, and we cherish who we are, this, this composition of, of many, many pages of a book. Yeah. And with a bit of respect for each other's sexuality, nationality, religion, this Race. world would be a fantastic, fantastic place. Acceptance <laughs> and respect. And that's, we're only two words away from, you know, such a wonderful planet. Yeah. The, Interesting. The, yeah, yeah, I guess, yes, we are. And I think that's, that's a, that'd be a, that'd be a great way to end the show, except we have a couple of minutes left. <laughs> so we got to continue on. Well, we don't have to, but we will. Honor and respect. Because the audience, the audience paid their money to get in and they want their time. <laughs> they want, look at them. We can, we can continue talking about honor and respect. Uh, yeah, yeah, continue. Yeah, I think honor and respect. Well, if you respect if you respect other people to the same extent that you, you know, have your own self-respect, then of, of course you're going to you're going to honor, you know, them as well. I mean, that's what Namaste means. Mm. Is that the the place that in me. in me that's identical to the place in you honors Each honors other. that yeah. relationship. Yeah, and there's and, and you know there's um. Here in you. There is so much, uh, there's so much to that in this world. Like Louis, uh, you studied, you know, many of the, um, the cultures. He knows a lot, he, he talks a lot about the Roman cultures and because and he studied Latin. And you know, wow. and, and and well, well, because I'm and so you, you, I, I, did, that, I, I thought, never got good at the speaking. I thought that was the, a dead language. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. guess not. The, well, yeah, it's complicated. Okay. Uh, Somebody else. Oh. But I was just going to bring up the point about the Mervine, California. Yeah, you said we were in the, the Romans were enlightened and then we went to the Dark Ages. Okay. Well, at any rate, <laughs> uh, we're, we're signing off to Progressive Soup. I'm David Stevenson, Ron Charisa, Joe Diamidi, and Louis Diamidi. And we'll see you, uh, we'll see you next, uh, next Wednesday. Have a great end of the week. Bye. Namaste. 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 Namaste.